Well, good afternoon, church family. This is Pastor Danny. It's about three o'clock on Saturday afternoon, and I wanted to take the time and um, continue where I left off on my last um, devotional uh, or message with you on the study of Gideon and the call and preparation of his life. Uh, Before we do, I want to pick up and finish the life of Gideon, but before we do, I want to pray. Hope you guys are doing well, and I hope this encourages you. I'm going to be in Judges chapter 6 if you want to grab your Bibles, and I'm going to be in Judges chapter 6 starting off, and then I'm going to be in Judges chapter 7. Father, I thank you for this afternoon. God, I, I thank you for what you're doing in the earth with this quarantine, and uh, God, I thank you that you're uh, showing us again and, and teaching us again that not only are we quarantined in the natural, but God, we're in Jesus Christ. We are, we're quarantined in the Spirit. God, we're covered by your by your covering, by your covenant, by your protection. And we thank you for that, Father. So, Father, uh, I just pray that you continue to provide for us. I pray that you continue to keep us safe from catching any kind of virus or sickness. And I pray that you would uh, teach us and help us to learn what you want us to know and learn during this time. Father, may, uh, I pray that this uh, devotional or message would be a, a blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Where we left off last time talking about Gideon destroying his father's uh, altars uh, that he had made to Baal. And we talked about destroying strongholds in our life. Well, after all this happened, the Bible says that uh, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Um, one thing you'll notice in the book of Judges and in, in the story of Gideon that the Bible calls him sometimes Jerubbabel or Gideon. These are just two names for the same person that, that is interchanged. But the Bible says that the, that the Spirit of God came upon Gideon. He blew a trumpet and God began to draw an army of Israelite men to Gideon. And Gideon began to uh, get a little shaky in his faith. Um, I think this was for several reasons. Um, one was the, the 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 brevity of the situation. All of a sudden, going from you know the poorest, uh, being the poorest family within the smallest tribe, and 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 all of a sudden you're thrust into a place of leadership, and and and, and thirty two thousand men. Uh, are all of a sudden at your beck and call and you're the leader. All of this could be very shaky. And God was extremely patient with Gideon in helping his faith kind of catch up to his call. And uh, Gideon saw all this and he said, God, if you've really called me, if you're really going to save Israel by my hand, oh, please, let me let me put out a fleece. Uh, Father, I've got this 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 sheep's fleece here. Or it was a it was a fleece of wool, a sheepskin. And Gideon said, "God, when I get up in the morning, would you please just let the fleece be wet, and let the ground around the fleece be dry?" And the Bible says that next morning that that God honored his request, and the next morning the, the fleece was so wet that that Gideon was able to wring it out, and it and it produced a bowl full of water. And Gideon said, oh, Father, please, God, don't be angry with me. Let me just put out one more fleece. This time, God, let the fleece be completely dry when I get up in the morning and and let the ground be wet all around the fleece with dew. And Gideon woke up the next morning. The Bible says that that night God did what Gideon asked. God let the, the... The fleece of wool be completely dry, but the ground around it was completely wet with dew. And Gideon started to gain confidence. He knew that God had called him, but but all of a sudden, God kind of turned the tables on Gideon and started to challenge Gideon's faith even more. Let's pick up in uh, in chapter 7. I'm going to start in verse 1. I just want to read verse 1 and point out one thing to you. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched, that word could be encamped, pitched or encamped beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Mora in the valley. Now listen to that second part of the verse, and I'll show you what's beginning to happen here. So that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. In the valley. Now this is going to be very strategic for what God is going to, uh, how God is going to deliver the Midianites into Gideon's hand. 
God had positioned the enemy in the valley. We're going to see the details of this in just a few minutes, but I wanted to say, you know, when we answer God's call, when we deal with the strongholds, when we, when we, when we obey him, when we, uh, when we begin to move in faith and obedience, God begins to position the enemy for us in a place where when he puts his plan into action, the enemy cannot escape. You will see this over and over uh, in Scripture. Um, specifically, one example jumps all, jumps out of my mind is uh, God drew the, Pharaoh, the, the Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. And when he got them in place, the Bible says that he began to confuse their chariots. The wheels begin to mess up and fall off. And he basically got them in the place where they could not escape and their destruction came shortly thereafter. <clears throat> well, God is doing the same thing here with Gideon. And the Bible says that uh, about 32,000 men were ready to fight with Gideon. And, and all of a sudden, God challenged Gideon's faith again. He said, Gideon, you've got too many men with you. As a matter of fact, if I deliver you with this army of 32,000 Israelites, they are going to vaunt themselves against me and say that uh, their own hand saved them. So here's what I want you to do, Gideon. I want you to tell anyone who is fearful and afraid that they have permission to return and go home early. Oh my goodness. So Gideon goes and tells the Israelites, um, whoever is afraid and fearful, you can go ahead and go home. And the Bible says that 22,000 of them turned around and went home, leaving Gideon with 10,000 men. Now imagine what Gideon's faith is doing now. He's probably getting a little shaky because the Bible says that the Midianites were innumerable. There were so many of them. They were like grasshoppers everywhere in this valley. And God shrunk his army to 10,000 people. But God wasn't finished yet. Gideon, uh, uh, the Lord came back to Gideon. He said, Gideon, there's still too many men that are with you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go down to the water and I want everybody to get a drink. And as they drink out of the, the, this, this uh, supply of water, a, a river or whatever it was, I want you to go with your men and I want you to look and see. And everybody who gets on all fours and sticks their head to the water and laps it up or drinks it up like a dog would, like a dog would drink out of its water bowl, every single man who does that, I want you to mark them. And then I want you to notice every man that gets down, but instead of lapping it up like a dog, they put some water in their hand and they bring it up to their mouth and they drink out of their hand. I want you to mark them. So Gideon obeyed the Lord and he went down and he began to do this. And all of a sudden, there was way many people who were just getting on all fours and sticking their head in the river or the water supply. And there were very few who were taking their hand and bringing it up to their mouth. And Gideon marked them all. And by the time it was over, 9,700 of them had stuck their head down and drunk like a dog. Drank, they drank like a dog, lapped, lapped the water up with their tongue. Only 300 of them had brought water up to their mouth by their hand. And God said, the 9,700 that you counted, send them home. What? Send them home, Gideon. With the 300 who brought it up to their mouth, I will bring you deliverance. I will defeat the Midianite army with your 300-man army. Oh my goodness, can you believe Gideon's faith now? Did, did, I, did I get that fleece right, God? Did, 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 I, did I really hear you? And let's pick it up in verse 9 in chapter 7. And, and, and the Bible says, It came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thy hand. 
But Gideon, if if you fear to go down, verse 10, go with Pura, your, your, your servant, and, and go down to the host and hear what they say. And afterwards, you're going to be strengthened. So Gideon took his servant that night and, and with uh, Pura, and they went down and they, they kind of crept up toward the Midianite army. And God put them in a place where they could overhear two Amalekites or two Midianites talking with one another. And the Bible says that they, they lay like grasshoppers for multitude. And they're without number as the sand is by the sea for the multitude. All of these things Gideon was seeing. But all of a sudden he heard two of them talking. And this is what this is what they said. He said, one of them looked at the other and they were talking. He said, man, I tell you what, I dreamed a dream last night. and and Or I dreamed a dream and, and this cake of barley bread in my dream started to tumble in to the host of Midian. And as it came and rolled in or tumbled into our camp, it hit a tent and it hit it so hard that the tent lay flat and fell and it was overturned. And the other man, his friend, the other Amalekite or Midianite, whichever one they were, looked at him. He said, this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered the Midian, delivered Midian and all the host. Okay, you presumably, we have uh, presumably unsaved men in the, in, in the camp of the enemy, dreaming a dream and then interpreting it. And Gideon and Pura are overhearing this. Now, this is a reoccurring principle in Scripture that you see in stories, and it's this. You'll notice with the um, with when God was referring to Pharaoh and the Israelites coming out of Egypt, God said, "I will get me glory on Pharaoh, and through the hardening of Pharaoh's heart." By the way, Pharaoh hardened his own heart first, and God made him reharden it. And as God began to get him glory. Part of the way God gets glory is this. He makes the enemy prophetically declare the judgment that is coming. I'll give you some examples of this. God makes the enemy prophetically declare the judgment that is coming and acknowledge what is God is doing right before the judgment comes. You think of uh, Pharaoh's magicians after the third um after the third plague they said, "Pharaoh, this is the finger of God." Um another example would be Pharaoh's soldiers in in in, in his chariots when they were in the Red Sea and God began to confuse their chariots. They told Pharaoh, "Pharaoh, God is fighting for the Israelites. God is fighting for them." Another example is uh here with Gideon Here's two, uh, two of the two men, either Midianites or Amalekites, in, in the camp, and they are dreaming a dream, prophesying the interpretation of the dream, and, and, and telling what God is going to do through Gideon before he did it. One more example would be um, with Haman in the book of Esther. As Haman came back to his house and told um, Zeresh, his wife, and, 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 and their, their, their people around them, their wise men, whoever they are, and said what happened, how he had to honor Mordecai. Zeresh and his wise men said, um, if what you're telling us is the truth, um, you've begun to fall before them. And, and they, they told Haman, you're beginning to fall before, before Mordecai and before the Jews. And we all know what happened shortly thereafter. After Gideon heard the interpretation of the dream, the dream and the interpretation, listen to what happens in 15. You see a faith shift in the heart of Gideon. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshiped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Gideon, Gideon's faith, his courage, his strength, his resolve, it was all catching up to the Spirit of God upon him. And God was so gracious to Gideon. He was so faithful to Gideon to help him, to allow the, to allow the, the protection after he had destroyed his father's altars to Baal. 
to allow the the fleece twice to be answered before before him. Uh, he allowed Gideon to hear this dream and interpretation, and we serve a patient and merciful God. And here's the strategy that God put on Gideon's heart, and here's what happened. Gideon divided the 300 men into companies of th- of 100 each. So he divided the 300 men into three groups, and there was 100 men in each one. And they each took with men. Each man took a pitcher, a lamp, and a trumpet. The Bible says that um, uh, there were lamps or probably some sort of fire-type candle within the pitchers. Okay? And then Gideon said, I want you to go, and I'm, I want you, we're going to surround the camp from on high in the valley on all different sides. This hundred, you go over here on this side, this hundred over here, and this side, this hundred over here. And the Bible says that as the companies blew up in three, and Gideon said, as you see me give the signal, here's what I want you to do. I want you to break the pictures to where they hear breaking, presumably like clay pitchers. And then all of a sudden they see lights being lit up everywhere. And then I want to you to blow the, uh, I want you to blow the trumpets uh, first and then break the pitchers. And as you do this, I want everybody to scream the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now, I want you to see some further strategy of the Holy Ghost in this plan that God had Gideon implement. This is in verse 19. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. So first of all, let me remind you about the initial strategy. The Midianites were in the valley and God had positioned them there. So when this was taking place, they had to look up and see. And it looked from on high. This attack was coming down on them. But secondly, notice what verse 19 says. It says, they came on the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch. Now, this is very strategic by the Lord. You've got the guard of the Midianites coming off their shift so you know that they're tired because they've just gone off a, a, uh, their entire shift. But then you've got the new shift coming on, having to wake up and get ready to be on their shift. So they were already in a natural state of confusion. The ones who weren't sleeping, they were all the, the, the guard, the security watch guard of the Midianites were already in a natural state of confusion. And all of a sudden, Gideon gives a signal. And the three companies, they, they blew their trumpets. They break all their pitchers. They held their lamps in their left, left hands and their right, in, in the right hands to blow with all. And, and they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And as they did this, as they broke the pitchers, as they blew the trumpet, as they screamed and shouted, all of a sudden, the Midianites begin to wake up. They get, begin to hear. They begin to see. But that's not all what happened. The Lord took what was done in the natural out of obedience and by his Holy Ghost, he moved into the Midianite camp and he created a state of confusion and chaos and he multiplied what Gideon's army was doing. So much so that the Bible says every man stood up. They started scurrying around. They got up. They did not know what was happening. There was confusion and chaos everywhere. And the Holy Ghost moved in and magnified it and brought in confusion. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. In other words, they all started to fight one another out of the confusion and chaos. The pitchers breaking, the trumpets blowing, the lights from on high looking all around. They thought they were consumed. And in all of this, the Holy Spirit moved in. And all of a sudden, they, the, they started to kill one another. And that day, God allowed Gideon then to begin to pursue. And they pursued and they won the battle. And, and that is how God fought for Israel with 300 men. And, and that's going to conclude our, our study with, with, with Gideon. It finishes the calm preparation of Gideon, and it just shows us. So I just want to recap a little bit and just remember to, to, to be encouraged. You know, Gideon was a, was a man who thought on God. 
that was evident by his response to the angel by the wine press. And even though his tribe was the smallest and his family was the poorest, God began to take a man who was probably weak in faith and, and began to look on him. And the, the look of the Lord was upon Gideon. And with that look, God began to strengthen him. And with that look, God began to increase his faith. God began, began to give Gideon strength to deal with his father's altars to Baal. And we talked about dealing with strongholds in our life, especially ones that are passed down from our lineage and our families. God began to increase Gideon's faith through fleece giving. God began to uh, increase um, Gideon's uh, faith by shrinking his army. But with that shrinking, he, he let him hear the dreams and the interpretations of it. And, uh, you know, with that, with that fleece giving, sometimes people look on that and they say, well, Gideon should have been a, a better man of faith. He, he shouldn't have had to rely on a sign. And, you know, if that's where you're at with your faith, well, good. You know, I'm, I, and I mean that genuinely. I'm glad you've grown in the Lord where you can be there. But there's a lot of Christians who aren't there. And I would encourage it this way. You know, as far as uh, fleecing the Lord, um, I would say that it all comes from the perspective from which you do it. If you, if you test or f- uh, set a fleece before the Lord out of uh, a spirit of unbelief, that's what uh, the Lord does not look uh, favorably on. But if you do it out of a spirit of belief, you know, and you, you have faith and you're, and you're saying, God, I, I think God works with that and he's patient with that. You know, maybe he does grow us to where we can hear his voice more clearly and, and we know we've heard and, and we can move in faith without asking for a sign or a fleece. But um, I think of Zechariah and Mary in the New Testament. This is an example. Zechariah asked, how can this be? And, and, and God made him go mute. He didn't allow him to talk anymore until his son, John the Baptist, was was um was born and when he wrote down and when he scribbled down his name shall be called John well that was the that was a spirit of belief but before it was a spirit of unbelief and he went mute because of it um but you think of Mary she asked the same question the mother of Jesus she said how can this be well obviously it was out of a spirit of belief she believed and it was like how is it going to happen and uh God honored her her request and and, and showed her and told her what was going to happen. So just think about that and meditate on that. But um, bless you guys. Thank you for um, spending time with me to study and learn about the call and preparation in the life of Gideon, how how God brought uh, victory and deliverance through Gideon's hands. Bye-bye.